There, I think that looks about right. I clearanced it quite a bit. Uh, I think I got it in the right place. I didn't take it all the way back because I'm not sure how how close it needs to go this way. So I'm going to try that and see how it fits. It's mostly in and it was fairly easy to get in there. If you don't have a two post car hoist, I recommend uh, having one for this job. Also a transmission jack makes it uh, really easy and handy because you can hold the diff in place and get your bolts all started. And I got that side done there too, and that hanger's in and just sitting there. And now I just got to get that other mount in, and you can see, maybe you can't see. Let's see if I can get in there. You can see where that clearancing has got to be done uh, to clear the cross member on that rib, on that diff. Okay, so that back diff mount is going to be a bit of a problem. Um, it's tilted forward, and I'll just show you. See those holes don't quite line up in there? So what I'm going to do is I am going to take these brackets off, let my transmission jack hold the diff, take those brackets off, and then I'm going to do up that back mount first and get it kind of started because I think it'll be easier to bolt these up after, the drop downs after I get the back cross member diff mount bolted up. And I'll show you uh, what it looks like when it's done. Those back diff mount bolts started and I've got that one there tight on the back diff mount there. And now what I'm going to do is I've, I've just got them started so now I'm just going to let that diff hang there. And I'm going to do up the front mount on this side and the front mount on the other side on those drop down brackets. Okay, I got all the lower bracket bolts started on the passenger side and what I found the easiest for the driver's side was starting this one first and then getting those two. These two go easy after this one. If you do it the other way, this one's a pain. It doesn't want to go. So start this one first and then do those two. Okay, the differential is in and tightened down and I'm just going to show you all of the clearance we have there. Lots of clearance. I don't know if that rib even needed to be clearanced, but it probably helps because it's probably going to move around. And uh, yeah, then you, I got all of these bolts back here tight and you can see how much that one is tweaked for the rear diff mount. That's the factory one that you'll be running because they don't have anything aftermarket for it that I could see in the kit. And uh, it looks like we're probably going to have to clearance the exhaust to make the drive shaft fit now because it looks like a harsh angle. So we'll work on that next. So I'm mocking up the front drive shaft here and it looks like the exhaust is really close to the drive shaft, especially where that balancing weight on the drive shaft, it might contact when it's spinning uh, and when this thing is torquing a bit. So I'm going to clearance it with a air hammer and just kind of bend that pipe in a little bit. Okay, so I couldn't find the bit for my air hammer that I wanted to use, but a uh, torch and a peening hammer will work just fine. Uh, so I'm going to heat it up so it gets a little bit soft and then I'm going to bang it in a little bit with a hammer and just kind of indent it a bit so that we have some clearance there. You can see that it's starting to get warm. Okay, so clearancing with a hammer gave me the clearance that I was looking for. It's still close, but it's way got way more gap there now, so I'm not worried about it actually contacting and touching the exhaust when it's spinning and making noise. Okay, so one thing I'm doing that they didn't include in the kit and they don't talk about is I am keeping the top part of that heat shield and I'm clamping it back into place and you know, we threw the lower part away because it'll interfere with the drive shaft. But the reason I'm keeping that shield is because this is an automatic transmission and there's no sense putting that exhaust heat into the oil pan of this thing and uh, overheating the oil and having a cooler to do more work than it has to. So why not run the heat shield and keep that heat out of there? Okay, control arms, the rear bushings and sleeves. They want you to use the 14 millimeter hole, which is the larger bolt sleeve to go in the bushing. What I like to do is I like to put it in the bottom and get it started there. Let's see if I can get this camera to hold just right and capture what I'm doing here. See, this is this is what I do. I put the sleeve in the bottom like that, and then I put it like that. And you can only usually push it so far. Oh, well, this one wants to slide in, but what you can do is just take a hammer and just tap on the bushing like that until the sleeve goes through. This one was going to push in with by hand. The other one wasn't. It was a little bit tight.
Okay, so the front of the control arm, uh, what here's the bushings and the sleeve. So it's the smaller whole sleeve. And it's still a 64 millimeter long. Uh, and if you're not sure which size it is, I think there's all the only ones left are all the same size anyways. Uh, the rear control arm has the larger 14 millimeter hole. I didn't measure this one, so I don't know what size it is, but the rest are all the same size hole anyways. Just make sure the length is right. There are shorter ones in there, so get the 64 millimeter one. If you're not sure, just grab your old bolt and see if it slides in. And this is the bolt for the front of the control arm and it slides in nicely. So just install those bushings in that sleeve and you'll be all right. Okay, so you need to remove the strut now and you're gonna have to take this strut bar off the top of the vehicle from both sides and then you're gonna have to remove the strut because they're gonna want a strut spacer under here to push the strut down so that the four inch lift will not affect the normal travel of the strut. If you don't move that, you're gonna have suspension problems. I've removed the strut and what they want you to do is they want you to slot this out so that you have some room for camber adjustment later. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay, so this is what the strut looks like when you slot it the way they want it to. And how I did that was I took a drill bit and I drilled a, a hole closer to the inside of the strut there and then I took a zip disc and I zipped out what I couldn't get with the drill bit and then I took a steel, uh, I don't know what that is, carbide bit and I made it uh, slotted uh, nicely, took out all the burrs and everything in the middle so the bolt can slide back and forth and that'll give you your camber adjustment. Strut spacer, they said you have to grind off this tang here which is the alignment dowel uh, for the strut spacer. So just make sure you get the alignment of your the top of your strut right and it should be aligned like this. So uh, these two bolts will be facing the, these two bolts facing the inside and that one facing the outside. Okay, so in their instructions, they say that you have to modify the spindle. Uh, you have to grind out uh, something and make something flat. And this is what I can tell from their instructions. There's like a little hump here on the casting and they want that flat. And I'll just show you what it looks like on the other side because I did it already. And I ground that sucker flat, and what that does is it allows um, it allows the spindle to move in this slot back and forth that we just ground out, so that we can adjust our camber uh, when the wheel alignment is done. So that's the purpose of that. So the instructions say to install the new ball joints on the lower side of the control arm, which I've done on both sides. Uh, on this side, I'm probably going to do a little bit different procedure just because how this axle goes in. Okay, so on this side, what I did was I put the ball joint in the um, spindle part first, or the steering knuckle, or whatever you want to call it. And then I slid the axle into place, and then I put the bolts in for the ball joint. And I find that's easier on this side because of how long this shaft is. If you're wondering which springs are which, these ones here are the front, and these ones here with the taper, the crazy taper there, those are the rear. So I just had to undo this ball joint because i got to get this spring in here with that isolator. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to slip the spring up. I'm going to put that spacer in there that they want. i got the lower isolator on, and I'm going to put that spring in there. And then I'm going to take my transmission jack, and I'm going to start pushing up on the control arm against the spring. Before I do that, because I'm on a lift, I always recommend putting a brace at the back i've seen too many videos of guys where they are doing that and they lift the front of the vehicle and the vehicle slide or lifts up and tilts off the lift and slides backward and falls off the lift so i'm not going to do that we're just going to put this brace here and that's going to prevent that from happening okay so i got the passenger side control arm done and it worked like a charm by putting the ball joint in the uh, knuckle first and then sliding the axle in and then jacking up on the control arm and then putting the ball joint in place with the three bolts. Uh, I did have to have this bolt in place already because I didn't have enough room to actually get, you can see there isn't enough room there to get it out. So it had to be in place already. So I put that in there first and then I got it in place and then I got a couple bolts started. Okay, when you're putting your driver's side together, don't forget to put your axle in because if you put your, don't put your axle in now, you're not going to get it in once this is bolted up. Uh, it's just how they did it at Suzuki. I think it's kind of a pain how they set this up because when this axle needs to be changed at some point, it is going to be it's going to be difficult because that spring is hard to push up. 
before you put your uh, locking hubs on, don't forget to put your your spacer ring and your snap ring back on.